Mike Johnson. What time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do you know what time is it? Tell me, do you know? Do Lacrosse boys, Patriots look to take on the Wayne Valley Indians. I'm Andrew Gaio alongside me, my colleagues David Sundup and Judge Matt DeBeau. Senior announcer day here as Matthew will be making his last announcing time. But we'll get back to that in a moment. Gentlemen, what revenge does Wayne Hills take into this game from last year's loss in the Mayor's Cup? Well, Wayne Hills, they're up 4-2 in last year's game going into the fourth quarter. But then they lost the game in overtime 5-4. But they really need to rely on their scoring. Kyle Hannenberg, J.R. Glita, Corey Rosenblum. They need those guys to come up big today if Wayne Hills wants to win the Mayor's Cup. Yeah, they really, I think, have to focus on the person between the pipes. That's Mr. Cornitzer, and he's, he's a young goalie. They really have to help him out. If he has a good game, Wayne Hills is going to have a good game. That's what it comes down to. Kyle Hannenberg takes it up and is tripped by a Wayne Valley defender. Corey Rosenblum chases after it, picks it up, cradles his way down the sideline, gives it up there, go back to Hannenberg. Berg gives it back there to number 12, Michael DiCiera, the baseball transition. Swung there, shot off to the right. That shot there was by number 15, Ian Little. So we got a whistle here, so the ball will be in favor of the Patriots. Pardon me, J.R. Glita took the shot. J.R. Glita, one of the big scorers for this Patriots team. Like I said before, they really need the scorers to come up big, but also their defense had some lapses in the fourth quarter and in overtime. So they need that defense led by senior captain Eric Bellegarde and junior Josh Klein to come up big and help protect David Kornitzer and give him all the help he needs. Caparasso takes it down. Down low there to DiCiara. A flag is thrown. So it looks like the Patriots will get more possession. Substitution coming in. I believe. As number 17. Number 17, Matt Weinstein, the sophomore, checks into the game for Mike DiCiara. Hannenberg makes a move. Gives it up to Rosenblum. Rosenblum shoots. And it is saved there by the goalie for the Indians. That is number 18, Anthony D'Alessandro. So the Indians regain possession. Ball comes our way, taken by number 22 of the Indians. That was a nice save there by D'Alessandro in his first year, uh, in his first year as the netminder for these. As the Indians take an early lead as Corey Niddle, the brother of Eric Niddle, scores for the Indians. So the Indians take an early 1-0 advantage. A nice goal there by Corey Niddle on a nice low shot. Tough for Corey to stop. Rosalum almost scored on the previous position for the Patriots on a low shot. But Corey Niddle coming over, playing in his first season for the Indians as a sophomore, gets the game start with a goal for Wayne Valley. You so... Know, Lacrosse is a very high-scoring game, so uh, Mr. Cornitzer in goal there cannot get his emotions let let his emotions get the best of him. He has to stay in this because goals happen very quickly in lacrosse, as you're sure to see here. Berg gives it up there to Caparasso. Caparasso throws it to the other side, back to Caparasso. Caparasso to Hannenberg. Hannenberg shoots, no good. Rebounded there, rolls to number 19, J.R. Glita. To Corey Rosenblum. Rosenblum gives it up. And number 15, Ian Little, just gets decked on the inside by a Wayne Valley defender. A battle of number 15s in the Wayne Valley zone as Ian Little is really getting aggressive here so far in the early going. But Andrew, let's talk about the head coach of the Wayne Hills Patriots, Steve Jacobson. He's known as the Jake around the hallways of Wayne Hills High School. He will not let his players get down. He will really motivate these players to get back into this game. Uh, 
The Jake is a lacrosse guru here at Wayne Hills High School. A legend in New Jersey. Rosenblum shoots no good. Goes wide of the net. Caparasso going for it. Ball rolls by us. I really hope a ball does not hit us. There will be an issue if that occurs. Offsides on the Indians, so the Patriots regain possession in this early 1-0 deficit. Well, Andrew, you used to be a baseball catcher, so you're used to these balls hitting you. Yeah. I think you could handle it. Yeah, but that was with equipment on it. Right now, let's just say my legs are wide open, and I'm not hoping that I get hit in any parts of my body. So Caparasso will take it for the Patriots. Caparasso on the league leaders, excuse me, team leaders for assist this year. Given there, shot there by Glita is off wide right, so the Indians will take possession. Speaking of Dave Caparasso, in the Patriots game at Demarest last Tuesday on May 15th, Dave Caparasso had two assists in an 8-3 victory for the Patriots. So the Patriots are typically a high-scoring team, so they rely on a lot of scoring to get these wins. So number 27, I'm not sure who that is, checks in for the Patriots. Unless I was mistaken. Valley gives it up. Taken by number 22 of Valley. Ball goes out of bounds. So it'll be in possession of the Patriots. Caparasa will take it for the Wayne Hills Patriots. He takes it to his right side. Looking for a man. Gives it to Little. Ian Little, football player, gives it back to Caparasa. To Rosenblum. Rosenblum behind the net. To Glid. Excuse me. Gives it to Hannenberg. Hannenberg makes a move. Trying to create some space. Hannenberg. He crosses it and it goes over the head of Mike DiCiera and it rolls down the sideline. As Mike DiCiera sends a Valley player to the ground, that was number 17 of the Indians. I am not finding him on the roster. That is Steve Smith. No relation to the football player for the Carolina Panthers. Number 43 of Wayne Hills. Not on my roster again. So he checks in for the Patriots. Bobby Bishop takes it up for the Indians. Gives it up there to number six. If the Patriots want to win this game, the one player they must shut down besides Corey Nell is Bobby Bishop. Bobby Bishop, I believe he scored the game-winning goal in overtime in last year's contest. They really need to shut him down, double-team him, get Kyle Hannenberg out on the perimeter on Bishop, and make sure Bishop has to pass the ball and defer to other teammates. Bishop gives it up there to number 24, Ryan Cummings, who gives it up to number 9, Chris Cavallo. Bishop. Runs around, being covered by Josh Klein. Gives up the 23. 23 runs in, he shoots, and it's off the post. Corey Niddle shot it, and it bounced off a Patriot defender and deflected into the air. Indians trying to regain possession. Cavallo gives it up there to Niddle. Niddle runs in. Gives it up to Martin. Larry Martin. Shoots it. Gives it to Bishop. Bishop makes a move. Gives it to number nine, Cavallo. Back to Niddle. Niddle shoots, and it's wide right. So the Indians still regain possession. Indians still trying to push. Diglio giving Bishop a hard time. Cavallo runs in. He shoots. It's saved by David Kornitzer. Big save there by David Kornitzer as Wayne Valley is really starting to get some momentum here in the Patriots zone and starting to throw a lot of shots towards Mr. Kornitzer's way. Bowen Jones, number 43, checks out for the Patriots. He's 34 on my roster, but maybe they meant 43.
So Indians still have possession as uh, numerous members of the Patriots check in and out. So Andrew, Andrew Matt, I guess that Coach Jacobson really wants to keep his starters fresh for this game because he knows that if this game gets into the latter stages and goes into overtime, he really needs his starters to be fresh. I'm curious about who number 27 is because he keeps on checking back into the game for the Patriots, but he's not on my roster. Hopefully we'll find out. Unlike in girls lacrosse, the uh, male counterpart has lots of stoppage time, and uh, normally a girls lacrosse game you'll get lots of fouls, but no timeouts, whereas in boys lacrosse you see lots of timeouts and uh, substitutions, as, as you've been seeing. Rosenblum takes it up for the Patriots. Gives it back to Hannenberg. Hannenberg. Gives it to Little. Little to Caparasso. Caparasso running around the net. Knocked away there by number 22, Dan Coviello, the soccer player for the Wayne Valley Indians. <coughs> Coviello goes on the ground to Bishop. Bishop makes a move on Kyle Hannenberg. Bishop making some space. He runs down the field looking for a man to beat, and he shoots it wide over the net as it goes over the net and David Cornitzer chases after it. Great play there by Bobby Bishop to scoop up the ground ball and then he runs on the field but his pass for Chris Caval is just out of his reach as Wayne Valley turns over the ball to the Patriots. And Bobby Bishop is just a fantastic athlete. He played football for the Indians and then he was one of the top wrestlers in New Jersey. He had over 100 career victories. He was just an incredible wrestler and now doing it here for the Indians in lacrosse. Dave Cornitzer just sprinted down the field. Trying to do something. Again, I'm not too familiar with lacrosse, so we'll see what happens. Dave, you mentioned earlier about how Bobby Bishop is a star wrestler, and I believe he's going on to better things at Stevens Institute of Technology in Hoboken to wrestle. Uh, so we wish him the best of luck, even though he's our competition today. You always like to see Wayne Knights succeed in better things. Yeah, wrestling could really uh, take you a long way in life. I'll get back to it after this. Hannenberg shoots. He scores on the pass from Rosenblum. Sensational play there by Kyle Hannenberg to knot up the game at 1-1. Kyle Hannenberg, deja vu all over again. Last year against the same Wayne Valley Indians team, he got the Patriots on the board first, doing the same again this year. Let's hope the result in the end is different, though. So the game now knotted up at one apiece. The Indians will go for the faceoff versus Hannenberg. Actually, pardon me. Yes. Bishop takes it off for the Indians. Picks a spin move on Matt Diglio. Diglio and also a soccer player for the Patriots. An exceptional lacrosse player. Given down there to number 24, Ryan Cummings. Cummings gives it up to Bishop. Bishop. Bishop gives it to number six. As he gives it up to Cavallo. Cavallo passes it to Cummings. It goes out of bounds. There's been a lot more offensive opportunities for the Wayne Valley Indians than the Wayne Hills Patriots. They really need to do a better job of clearing the ball out of their defensive zone and putting more pressure on the Valley goalie. Wayne Valley has been a little careless so far in terms of passing the ball. We've seen a couple of bad passes so far, which have really helped out the Wayne Hills Patriots as they're taking advantage of Wayne Valley's missed opportunities on offense. Little takes it up to Caparasso. Caparasso gives it up to Rosenblum. Rosenblum trying to find a man. Moving around, trying to create a play. Gives it up to Hannenberg. Coach Jacobson yelling out the play, trying to get his men in the game. Little botches the play, but runs after it. Pushed there by Bishop, so the Patriots will retain possession. DiCiara checks back into the game for the Patriots.
Right now, while we have a moment, I'm going to give you tonight's trivia question, which is brought to you by Wayne Hills High School. Study hard and get good grades. Who was the captain for the Patriots last season, and what was his uniform number? Answer coming up shortly, as, has, as we have a daily double on the last game of the season that we're doing. Very emotional day here on this fine Monday afternoon here on May 21st, 2007, as this is Matt DeBose last hurrah. I get tears in my eyes just thinking of it. Taken up by the Indians. Makes a juke. Ball's on the ground. Taken there by Martin. Martin, pump fakes. Goes it down low. As the Patriots, ball's still gone to lose. Cummings gives it to Martin. Martin trying to make a move. He shoots, and it goes wide, right? The referee blows for a whistle, so the Patriots will regain possession. You know, the Patriots have to do a better job of scooping up the turnovers. They're, they're forcing bad passes, and they're missing these opportunities that they cause for themselves, and it's really hurting them in, in the long run, because I'm sure the shots on goal are largely in favor to Wayne Valley. Kornitzer takes it up for the Patriots. The goalkeeper running into trouble. As he sprints back to the net. Good job there by Cornishter. Gives it to Rosenblum. Rosenblum trying to make a move down the field. Rosenblum trying to create space. Trying to get to the center. Rosenblum kicks it out as the ball skips down the field. Knocked down there. Goes to Hannenberg. Good play there by Belgard to Hannenberg. Goal there. Scored! On the play by J.R. Glida. Just another great move there by Kyle Hammer to get the ball up to Glida. So the Patriots take an early 2-1 to one lead. J.R. Glida, like I said in the pregame, needed to come up big today if the Patriots wanted to come out of this game of victory. And he's come up big so far, getting the Patriots the lead. And now the Patriots lead 2-1. to one. Another nice, low-bouncing shot by the Patriots. And the Patriots are doing a great job screening the goalie, Dale Sandro. So it's been really tough for the Wayne Valley goalie, Dale Sandro, to see the ball. And once, the, once he sees the ball, the ball's already through his legs and in the back of the net. Bishop and Hannenberg battling for it. Excuse me, that's not Hannenberg. That's number 23 of the Patriots. Brian Munoz making some noise. Ball goes on the ground, taken by Little. So the call goes in favor. There's a, actually a timeout, so the Patriots will burn a timeout, I believe. While wow, we have a moment, I'd like to give you... The answer to tonight's trivia question on this Monday Daily Double. As tonight's trivia question is brought to you by Wayne Hills High School. Study hard and get good grades. Tonight's question was, who was the captain for the Patriots last season? And what was his uniform number? If you said Dave Rogers in number nine, you are correct. Dave Rogers was the inspirational leader for the Patriots last season. First team all count. He was just an excellent player for the Patriots. And now he's continuing his lacrosse career at the University of Michigan. Matthew, this being your last Matthew, being here, your last game, what coming in, what were your emotions and feelings the night before? Were you, you know, upset? Were you, you know, talking restless, to definitely restless. Talking to Janice Debo about, you know, what this means and everything. What does this mean to you? I'm trying not to think about it, but, you know, Wayne Hills TV as a whole has meant quite a bit to me. It's engulfed much of my high school career and that's exactly how I wanted it, but I, w I don't want to dwell on the past because, you know, that makes me emotional. We don't want to do that on camera, so we're just going to stick with the future. And I'd like to think that I've left my mark here at Wayne Hills High School and that I'd be remembered quite fondly. So I'm, w I'm more, or more or less trying to celebrate that here today. Matthew, your marks have been engraved in Wayne Hills television history. There's no worries on that matter. Don't worry. In the meantime, Ugo Obillo says hello to all you watching this game, which is brought to you by Wayne Hills High School. Study hard, got good grades. Hannenberg takes it up for the Patriots. Hannenberg waiting patiently. Gives it up there to Caparasso. Caparasso running down to Little. One minute left in the first quarter. Little gives it up to Hannenberg. 
trying to kill some time. Di Tierra to Caparasso. To Glita. Glita to Rosenblum. Rosenblum to Little. Little to Hannenberg. Hannenberg to Di Chiara. Di Chiara trying to find some room. Gives it to Hannenberg. Hannenberg skipping around. Gives it up to Little. Little shoots. And it goes in. So Ian Little gets on the board for the Patriots. So now the Patriots have a 3-1 to one lead. Beautiful passing there by the Wayne Hills Patriots of Little, Caparasso, and Hamburg all involved. Great patience there by the Patriots as they waited for the opportunity to shoot the ball. And then Ian Little coming up big for the Patriots. Quite a faithful here for Mr. Little. You hear him screaming behind us, but they've come out in numbers to support him, and uh, they're certainly doing just that. Who go? I got you. No. I said it, yeah. yeah you got So now the face-off begins between Hannenberg and number 23, Brian Munoz. Munoz, I believe, first year of actually playing lacrosse. So that's a remarkable accomplishment, playing varsity on your first ever year playing. I know Munoz is a very, very hard worker. I see him at the gym often, you know, during the off-season working hard. So I give the man credit. End of the first quarter here at Wayne Hills Patriots Field. The Patriots lead the Wayne Valley Indians 3-1. to one. Gentlemen, thoughts on the first quarter of action? Well, I think the Patriots remember May 12, 2006 pretty well because they've really come out in this game. They've really taken it to the Wayne Valley Indians so far. A 3 nothing scoring run after allowing the first goal to Corey Nell. The Patriots have dominated most of the game on offense, and they've been converting when they've had chances. Wayne Valley, while they've also had their score opportunities, Wayne Valley has had poor passing, and they haven't gotten too many good shots opportunities. I think Wayne Hills is definitely coming out with quite a bit of intensity, but um, they're making their shots count, Dave, which is something that Wayne Valley's not. Wayne Valley's getting a lot, a lot more shots on goal, and Wayne Hills is just making theirs count. They're, they're screening the goalie, they're doing things right, just as their coach, I'm sure, is proud. Um, in the beginning, they struggled a little bit, keeping the ball out of their defensive zone, but they're doing much better on, and uh, we'll see if that carries over into the second quarter. We will see. I mean, that's why they play the games, right, Matthew? So, as we are here, you know, chilling in a nice warm day here at Patriots Field, which I think David should be renamed the Jake after the great Steve Jacobson. What do you think, Dave? Well, I think the field going this way should be renamed the Jake, but the field going the opposite way, which is used for soccer, should be named Osrek Stadium. I the Lona I call it the Lona Coliseum because that Oh, man, I like that better, Andrew. The that Lona Coliseum. That man has implanted such a program for this team that I mean I I can't get started on Lona Ozark. He's just a great man. I need to get to know him personally before I graduate because he's just an excellent coach. Oh the best thing about Lona, the hats. Oh the hats. The hats, the warm ups, you know, you just you know what's coming. He hasn't pulled Lona. a bell check yet though with the hood. No. No, he has not because the hats have been there for him. But we'll see what happens next season as the Lady Patriots look to retain their status among New Jersey's elite in girls soccer. Back here to the low cross, second quarter of action. Wayne Hills Patriots lead the Wayne Valley Indians three to one. I'm Andrew Guy alongside the senior Matt DeBow and David Suntup. Caparasso gives it up there. Knocked down is J.R. Glita. So the Patriots draw a penalty and will now get an opportunity to take advantage of it. Nice move there by Glita, getting into the interior of the Wayne Valley defense, but Wayne Valley is sending a message as Glita stick gets smacked down as he loses the ball, but it's a penalty on Wayne Valley, so Wayne Hill's up and have an opportunity to add to their 3-1 lead. Hannenberg gives it up there to Little. To Weinstein. Weinstein to Glita. Glita to Caparasso. Back there, the Rosenblum. Rosenblum shoots, and it's wide left. Ball rolls out of play, so the Patriots will retain possession. Thing about lacrosse is, I believe, if 
the team that shoots it out of bounds retains possession. Not sure completely. Hannenberg runs towards the center. Throws it to Rosenblum, whose shot gets deflected, so D'Alessandro gets a save. Indians trying to take control. Number 17 of the Indians, Steve Smith, gives it up there to Niddle. Niddle gives it up to number 9, Chris Cavallo. Cavallo to the far side to number 6, Brian Heffern to Bishop. Bishop to number 23, Corey Niddle to Cavallo. Cavallo sprints towards the center, does a spin move. So Patriots get possession again as a, the referee blew a whistle, not sure exactly of the call. We may be offsides. Kornitzer gives it to Hannenberg. Hannenberg runs down the side. Blows past the Valley defender. Hannenberg makes a spin move. Gives it up to Di Chiara. Di Chiara. Gives it up. Valley takes it away. Dan Coviello as people are scrambling on the ground. So now the Patriots will regain possession. As number 22 for Valley just slammed his stick on the grass. So maybe Valley's starting to get a little frustrated here. But even though the Patriots are up 3-1, this game is far from over. Because Wayne Valley, they know in the back of their mind that they are definitely able to, of coming back in this game. Hannenberg. Ball taken away there by the Indians. Indians trying to run the fast break. Bishop shoots wide right. So the Patriots will retain possession as the ball goes onto the freshman baseball field. Andrew, you were saying before that the shooter retains possession, but I believe it's the stick closest to the ball where it goes out of bounds. You'll see quite often that the players will run towards the ball after it's thrown out of bounds and throw their stick towards the line. That's because the first stick to cross the line, I believe, gets possession. Matthew, you know what? You don't know much about lacrosse, but that was a very integral part that you explained to me. Thank you, Matthew, for your assistance. Timeout called here by the Indians, so... Gentlemen, as we have a break here, thoughts on the second half, second quarter. Well, Wayne Hills is really trying to get down into the interior of this Valley defense. It's not working because Valley has really come to play in this second quarter so far. They've really been a lot more physical. They've stripped Kyle Hannenberg of the ball a couple of times. They stripped Gleedle once, even though it was a penalty. So Wayne Hills needs to settle for more outside shots, more ball movement, and really move the ball around. On defense, they've been pretty good, except for the one opportunity that Bishop had. But Bishop had a great opportunity, but he just missed the net on his shot. Gentlemen, as we are right now, Patriots lead the, the Indians three to one. Can they keep up this momentum at the at the rate they're playing? You know, I'd like to say yes, but you have flashbacks to uh, last year at Barber's Pond where they had the lead and going into the second half they they lost it. And we all know what happened in overtime, but I think they can regain momentum. I think they have still have the bad taste in their mouth from last year, and they, they want to prove everyone wrong that they can beat Wayne Valley. Also, guys, both these teams are playing in the state tournament. Wayne Hills has a trip to Sparta on Wednesday, and Wayne Valley, also in the North Group 2 bracket, will take a trip to Northern Highlands, who Wayne Valley, I believe, has already lost to this season once. Yes, indeed they have. Yeah, Northern Highlands is 7-0 and in the NBIL. So Northern Highlands definitely one of the top teams in North Jersey. The girls team actually beat Northern Highlands, which is a powerhouse in girls lacrosse as well. So that was a good accomplishment for the girls team. Yes, the girls have a state game set on the road, I believe, at IHA. Yes, the Immaculate Heart Academy in Washington Township, New Jersey. And if Wayne Hills wins their state game, I believe they play Ramapo in the next round. Ramapo is definitely a powerhouse. The boys you're talking about? Yes, the boys. Yes. 
because the girls that they when they play Powerhouse Ridgewood, who just won the Bergen County Lacrosse Tournament. Yeah, last year the girls lacrosse team won their first ever state game against the Milburn Millers, and we were here to telecast that. But then they went out to lose in the next round. So the boys Hill lost last year. Hillsboro, I believe they lost. Yes, you're to. correct. Andrew. And the boys lost to a very powerhouse from Morristown, right? Morristown down in South Jersey. Niddle takes it up for the Indians. Niddle. Trying to find a man, gives it down low to Cavallo. No relation to Jimmy. Cavallo. Yeah, Jimmy Cavallo, legend in the broadcasting world for MSG. Cavallo. Oh, excuse me, Niddle. Makes a move there on Little. He shoots save there by David Cornish. Dave Cornish has really expanded his game since last year, huh, Dave? Oh, definitely. Last year, he got some training as a junior varsity guard, but this year, with the loss of Kevin Capola to graduation, Mr. Cornish has really stepped in nicely for this Patriots team. But also, give credit to Ian Little and Bowen Jones for forcing Niddle to the outside on that last shot. As another good save by Cornish, as the ball, I believe, hit off his leg. Also, another big part of this Patriots team, Bowen Jones. He played lacrosse his freshman year. He didn't play last year, but he's come back this year. And he's really brought some physicality to this Wayne Hills team. He's been a huge force on defense. I well, believe he plays defense, right? Bowen didn't play last year? I don't think he did. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't remember. You're probably right, Dave. You're a guru. I think he plays defense, right, Andrew? Yes, he does play defense. Ryan Nolan played his freshman year. I tried to convince him to come back this year. But he, due to injury-related issues, he figures not to play anymore. He's focused on football. I think he was actually healthy the whole year this year. For yes, he was for the first so that, time in a really long time. Yeah, so he just really wants to be in shape for football season. Try to help in the drive for five, which begins on Saturday, September 8th at 2.30 as the Patriots' quest for their fifth state title in the last six years begins at Northern Highlands. Nil still trying to find some room. Ball skips away from him. Cavallo down low. Stolen by Josh Klein. Josh Klein throws it over the head. Goes to Cap. Bounces away. Caparoso fighting for it. Knocked down by Dan Coviello. Little trying to find some room. Moving around. Gives it up there to Rosenblum. Rosenblum shoots. It's high, taken there by Coviello. Coviello gives it up to Niddle. Niddle, whose brother plays at the University of Miami, shoots it wide right as the ball goes in favor of the Patriots. So, Andrew, I, I know Corey Niddle was not part of this Wayne Valley team last year, but I think he went to Del Barton and then he transferred at one of the private schools. I am not positive. I know his brother played last year for Valley, and he goes to the, the U and plays lacrosse, but I'm, so not, I'm sure. not sure. Yeah, so I'm not sure if Niddle had to sit out a few games for transfer regulations or what, whatever the rule is. But was, Are you sure he wasn't on JV last year? I, th I think he went to a private school last year. I'm not exactly sure. I will ask Eric when I have the uh, next opportunity to speak to him. Hannenberg charges down the middle of the field. Gets bumped there but stays on his feet by Bishop. Gives the ball to Di Chiara. Down low there. To Glita. Glita gets the hits the deck. Rosenblum shoots. Ball goes wide right as a flag is thrown. That's a great job there by Jared Glita holding on to the ball despite getting hit and then getting off to Rosenblum as Rosenblum had a good scoring opportunity for the Patriots. That's also a good job by Rosenblum. He heard footsteps coming and he got laid out, but he focused on the shot. Even though it didn't go in, made a pretty good shot. And now we'll see what the penalty does. So guys, why do you think Wayne Valley's really come out in this quarter and has really sent the message to the Patriots? Because they want to get that momentum back. They did that a little bit last year, if you remember. They knocked down Dave Rogers once or twice. They went after Hannenberg, they didn't get to knock him down. But you know, when they went after Rogers, who was their leader, they were trying to send the message that you know they were trying to be as mentally tough. Glita shoots, he scores. J. R. Glita. The lacrosse phenomenon 
scores once again in this game, so the Patriots take a 4-1 to advantage. A nice give and go there between Corey Rosenblum and J.R. Glita as J.R. Glita gets his second goal of the game and the Patriots take a 4-1 to lead. The Patriots are really starting to take away momentum from Wayne Valley because Wayne Valley came out in this quarter, really starts to play physical, and now Wayne Hills looks to quell the momentum of the Indians. Ruben Kegelman enters the game for the Patriots. Taken up there by the Indians. Taken up there by Heffern. Ball goes in the middle, knocked on the ground. So stay in possession of the Indians. Heffern will take it. I wasn't there. I was Give it up to Martin. Martin to Cavallo. Cavallo. Gives it up. Heffern gives it back. Ball goes out of bounds, so will stay in possession of the Indians. Actually, part of me will be in favor of the Patriots. Ball goes over the head of Eric Belgard. Taken there by Corey Rosenblum. Rosenblum makes a move. Rosenblum gives it to Hannenberg. Hannenberg down low. Knocked down there by Caparasso. Ball stay in favor of the Patriots. I believe he caught a piece of him while he was on the ground, and that's obviously a penalty, so it's going to stay in Wayne Hill's possession here. Colviello was disputing that call, but I don't see why he would. It was obviously a penalty. You want I think they want to protect the uh, the players when they're on the ground and lose their footing because that's when you know real real injury can occur. Kind of like protecting your quarterback. Good, good analogy, Matthew. Matthew will be, uh, I believe, doing play-by-play -play in the second half, if I'm not mistaken. Part of the second half. Me and Dave are going to split it. Rosenblum gets bumped. Puts it on the ground. Knocked around there by number 15, a Wayne Valley. That is Brett Silverstein, former basketball player of the Indians. Bishop throws it. It's saved by David Cornetter, and there is a flag on the play. We'll see what this call is. Your guess is as good as mine. So now, ball will be in possession. Timeout there taken by Dan Kilday. Is he still the coach, Dave? I believe so. Yes, he is the coach one, and I had a tennis match at Rampo Stadium. We rode with the Wayne Valley lacrosse team, and I actually had a chance to speak to Dan Kilday on the bus. I uh, praise him for his versatility. He's the boys' soccer coach, the ice hockey coach, and the boys' lacrosse coach, so he's quite a legend in the Wayne Valley sports world. I also went to a camp that he and Chip Smith coached a while back, Fast Feet Soccer Camp, so they do it all. They really do. Also an attendant, attendee of that camp, Ryan Dubin went to Fast Feet Soccer Camp back in the day. Myself, Kyle D'Amico, Ryan Dubin, Jason Evans, Chris Gaffney. It was a nice bunch. Matt Diglio, Matt Buren, Josh Klein, an interesting bunch of gentlemen that went to that camp. Oh, Andrew, you remember those soccer days a little too well. Oh, they, they, they were, were my green. pride and joy. What do you want? Playing for the Panthers, me and you. Basically warm the bench for all the starters. Hey, hey, as the time went on, I started getting time. I stuck with it. Yeah, I retired. Yeah. I actually got kicked off and retired, so it was a, <laughs> it was a mutual decision. Pompton Lakes, the playoff game, as you remember. Oh, I was like kicking bags onto the field, and you were trying to take the bags back. Yeah, I was trying to restrain you. As some Wayne Hills alumni here, Michael Calacurcio, Wesley Till, all here in attendance this afternoon. Taken there by the Indians. Ball on the ground, flags thrown. 
So we will see what the call is. Get him. Right here. The roster. What are you talking about? We're interviewing you, right? Yeah, yeah, Come on, Chief. As we are waiting here for the call, we have some interesting situations. Questions, comments, concerns, please email us, WayneHillsTV at AOL.com. Is Wayne Hills TV at AOL.com. Shot there goes wide left. So the Patriot and excuse me, the Indians regain possession. Ladies and gentlemen, the mayor. Mr. Scott Romana, who helped start the lacrosse programs here in the Wayne Hills Education Wayne Educational System, uh, is in attendance. He was also at the game last year as I interviewed him during halftime. What a save there by number one, David Cornitzer, as he stuffed Corey Niddle on that play. Lita in a battle there on the ground, going for the ball. Another Wayne Hills alumni that used to play lacrosse too, I'll give you Carmelo Anth Carmelo Guarneri and Eric Greenblatt. Two young men that used to play for the Wayne Hills Patriots. Niddle gives it up. Ball in front of the net. A squirmish in front. Sticks flying. Dirt going all over. He's Bowen Jones attacking. This is just a mess. Ball squirms loose as the ball somehow gets into the net. Bobby Bishop scored on that play. God knows how he did it, but the ball got in the net. Great job there by Bobby Bishop picking up the loose ball after about eight players combined. The both teams were fighting for that ball, and David Cornister came a little too far out of his net as Bobby Bishop had an easy put away for the goal. We call that one the dog pile. I don't know what the heck happened there. Everything just broke down. So guys, do you think this goal for the Indians is the goal that they really need to get back into this game? Oh, without question. They needed that goal because if they didn't get that goal, they would have been in deep trouble. Ball taken up by Diglio. Diglio shoots. His shot is saved there by D'Alessandro. It's definitely a start, Dave, if you go back to your question. I mean, they're going to have to start somewhere, and a goal like that is a good place. Ball taken up there by Hannenberg. Hannenberg makes a move. He shoots. It is taken away by the Indians, but regained by Mike DiCiera. Taken by Dan Coviello. Coviello trying to make a move. As uh, he gets smacked there with the stick by Dave Caparasso. So now Steve Jacobs is not happy at all with Dave Caparasso. So now the Indians will regain possession. You know, the stick handling skills of these players is just amazing. To be able to juke in and out of these holes and take these hits from the opposing defenders is just amazing because the force that these other sticks are coming at them is, is quite a bit. I, I don't want to pull Carmine Bell in here to get the exact <laughs> equation. <but. laughs> Carmine, a legendary factor here, part of the Wayne Hills faculty. Yeah, Carmine Anthony Bell, he's just a legend in the confines of Wayne Hills High School. Great physics teacher, great man. Does not put up great conversation if you try to talk to him. He's very sh kind of shy, actually. Not your typical Wayne Hills faculty member. Ball knocked loose. 
as Glita hits the ground. Picked up there by Di Chiara. Di Chiara, excuse me, Ian Little, pardon me. Little trying to find some room. Gives the ball up in the middle. Ball knocked loose. Ball pops up in the air. Still loose. <laughs> and they're still fighting as at the end, Weinstein just got stacked, but he comes right up. Matt Weinstein, the tough man he is. You know, this could get ugly very quickly. Both teams are doing a pretty good job of keeping their cool and not letting such, you know, little dirty calls get to them. This game definitely got very chippy in the fourth quarter last year, so uh, maybe we'll see some more of that physical play here again. But let's hope that the players and the refs could keep this game under control. Hannenberg to Caparasso. Caparasso down low to Weinstein. Weinstein. Back to Rosenblum. Rosenblum to Glita, but the ball skips away. As it is still on the ground. And they're going to say that it is the Indians' ball. As Jacobson, Coach Jacobson, is clearly upset with the call. Still. Interference called on the Indians, so the get ball possession will be in favor of the Patriots. How? Guys, while well, I have a moment, I'd like to wish a speedy recovery to Matt Kaufman. I believe he has either a broken ankle or a broken bone in his foot, so we hope uh, Matt Kaufman will be back soon. And that is the end of the first half of action as the Wayne Hills Patriots lead the Wayne Valley Indians 4-2. to two. Guys, first half of action was an interesting one. First quarter, Wayne Hills took the early lead. It retained it in the second quarter, but the Indians were kind of chippy sending some messages. What were your thoughts? Well, the Indians really got an important goal by Bobby Bishop to get back into this game. They're only down 4-2 going into the half, just like last year when Wayne Valley's down 4-2. So if I'm Dan Kilday, I tell my team, look, you're in the same spot as you were last year. You were down 4-2. You played a nice physical game in the second half. You got the goals that you needed. You capitalized on your score opportunities, and you came back in this game. If I'm Wayne Hills, if I'm Steve Jacobson, I tell my team, if I want you guys to remember May 12, 2006, okay? Because last year, you were in the same spot that we are. You know, lacrosse is a, a sport of momentum, and as you saw, Wayne Hills had quite a bit of that coming out of the first quarter. Into the second quarter, they had they had it going in their favor, and then one little goal by Wayne Valley diminishes that. So, because lacrosse is such a high-scoring game, you never know what's going to happen. Wayne Hills can't they can't loosen up the reins. They have to stay tight and they have to score. Come out and get a quick goal, put the momentum back in their favor, and keep Wayne Valley on their toes. Gentlemen. This is it with for me and Matthew DeBeau announcing together. Matthew, I just have some words for you. You know, freshman year, I saw you in TV One television production with Laurel Allegri. I walked into the classroom. I rekindled the fire back in the days when it was me and you at the Albert Payson Terhune Elementary School. It was emotional, to say the least. I mean, to revisit each other and to get to know each other again. It's been a great three years. You know, now that looking back on it, we've really come a long way between the two football seasons, the hockey season, and now this lacrosse, your last game ever doing with me and for forever here at Wayne Hills. I just want to let you know, it's been a pleasure, more than a pleasure, actually a privilege to announce with you. Thank you, Matthew. You've Andrew, really you really got to me a long way. Thank you for your kind words. It's been an absolute pleasure announcing with you. And uh, I'm not going anywhere. I'm sure we'll see each other quite a bit. Oh, I know that. These endeavors. I'll see you tomorrow. Actually, manana, as the great Chris Ionello says. So I'll see you tomorrow. And that is the end of the first half of action. Wayne Hills 4, Wayne Valley 2. We'll be back in the second half. David Santa. Senior. Play by play commentator. The drive for five begins September 7th, 2007.
be there. Andrew Gaio. Senior. Color commentator. Drive for Five begins September 7, 2007. Be there. Ever since we started 30 minute drill, security has been a major problem. <laughs> the security stinks. <laughs> I think we found a solution for this problem. Hey, Brian. What's going on, John? Let me see your pass. Okay, you can go through. See you, man. Oh, man, five minutes. But when you got a pass? No, I, uh, I lost that pass in the hall. Come on, B Ross. Uh... Welcome back to the 30 minute drill. I deny you entrance. Oh, snap. <laughs> Welcome back to the second half of action here as Wayne Valley makes it a 4-3 game as number 21 for the Wayne Valley Indians, Larry Martin, draws the Indians within 4-3. So Wayne Valley really comes out here with a bang in the second half. And now they've, they're have they once down 4-1 in this contest and now they're only down 4-3. I'm David Santop alongside Sean Yu and Michael Botwinick. Now, uh, this, this game is very similar to the last Mayor's Cup, how Wayne Hills was up and Valley came back with a strong offensive play and good defense to stop in the Wayne Hills from not scoring any. As Wayne Valley wins the faceoff, taken up by number 23, Corey Niddle. As Niddle falls down, loses his footing, I'm sure at this point in the game the field is very caught up. As Wayne Valley ties up the game, number seven, Daniel Eisenberg scores on a nice pass from number six for the Indians, Brian Hoffern. So Wayne Valley, just a couple minutes into the second half, has come back from four to one to make it a four-four contest. I mean, this offense is just working for them, and uh, everything's everything's flowing. You know, all their plays are going good, and just v Valley's on a streak right now. Yeah, Harvard did a great job to find Eisenberg streaking down the middle of the field. Found him wide open for the goal. So on the two goals that the Indians have had so far in this half, Wayne Valley has had wide open opportunities on both goals. Coach Steve Jacobson cannot be happy with his defense. As they are investigating Corey Niddle's stick, as a flag is thrown on the field, Very confusing play here, and I believe it's a stoppage of time right now, right, Dave? Well, they're invested. They're looking at Corey Nero's stick. The pocket has to be a certain size. If it's bigger than that size, then I believe he could get some penalty from the refs. And Corey Nero scored the first goal of this game, so if in fact something is wrong with his stick, there could be some major issues here as the refs are walking over to the scorer's table. Yeah, and Corey Niddle is a very uh, key player on this Wayne Valley team. And if they lose him, I don't know, Wayne Hills might come back. Well, the Patriots really need to develop a rhythm in the Wayne Valley zone because Wayne Valley just came out here in this half firing on all cylinders, storing two quick goals and getting right back into this game. Last year, Wayne Hills at least had a 4-2 lead going into the fourth quarter, but their 4-1 lead just evaporated like that. So now it's a whole new ball game here at Patriots Field. I mean, uh, Wayne Hills just lost their intensity when, when the second half started. You know, before in the first half, the tenacious defense, but now the defense is not as fast enough, not getting to the offensive players as quick as they did in the first half. I know Wayne Hills is very uh, optimistic coming into this game. They really thought they had a great chance to win this. And when they're up, by, when they're up early, they really... 
their, their uh, intensity is very high, they're playing very well, but now that they've lost the lead, you got to wonder about their uh, motivation right now. As we are about to resume play here at Patriots Field. I guess the stick issue wasn't a big deal as play continues. Well, Corey Niddle is not on the field for the Indians. So Kyle Hannibrick has the ball at midfield for Wayne Hills. Hannenberg takes the ball up the field into the Wayne Valley zone. Hannenberg already has one goal in this game. A shot fired by Rosenblum out of bounds. As Wayne Hills regains possession, Weinstein to Little. Little to Guida. Guida behind the net to Rosenblum. Caparasso to Little. Hannenberg. As the ball is deflected. Good defense there by Wayne Valley. Number 14, Kalora Golom. Guida trying to make a move. Guida has two goals in this game so far. Hannenberg. Hannenberg back to Guida. Guida fires a shot. He scores! A hat trick for J.R. Guida as the Patriots take a 5-4 to four lead. Yeah, I believe uh, the Wayne's players use that stoppage of time to their advantage, making the Wayne Valley team a little a little rusty at coming back, you know, before they're on a hot streak, and now they're just, they haven't been doing well on defense. Also, another major uh, thing that's going on right now is Corey Noodle still not back in the game. He's one of their most potent players, and it's really going to hurt them if he's not be able to come back for the rest of the game. As Hannenberg and Bishop to take the face off. Picked up by Bishop. As Bishop loses the ball, but it's regained by Wayne Valley. As Caval picks it up. Now I believe that was uh, Jair's third goal. Yes, he, that was a hat trick. Bishop on the left sideline. Passes out to Eisenberg, who tied it up moments ago. But now Wayne Hills has since taken the lead. Eisenberg to Bishop. As Bishop's stick is hit, but he still gets the ball out to number six, Brian Hawthorne. As Hawthorne, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, had a nice assist before. As a flag is thrown on the field. So guys, even though Wayne Hills was up 4-1, they quickly lost their lead. But how much of a different team do you think this team is than last year's team, seeing how Wayne Hills just came right back and scored a goal of their own? I mean, last year they just they just lost in the end. They just lost all the stamina, lost all the flow. But I think this year they got a strong focus, you know, tunnel vision in this game, just coming back and trying to trying to win, get revenge. Eisenberg passes it to number 11, I believe, Bobby Bishop. Hawthorne to Bishop. Bishop behind the net, looking to maneuver. Hawthorne. Hawthorne to Martin, who scored the third goal for the Indians in this game. Martin to Cavallo. Cavallo to Eisenberg. Eisenberg fakes a shot. Nice save there by Derek Kornitzer as he stones Bobby Bishop on the shot. Loose ball in front of the net. Is Wayne Valley had a player in the crease in Chris Cavallo. No penalty is called. But David Cornitzer coming up big once again for the Wayne Hills Patriots. Stoning a Wayne Valley scoring opportunity. Yeah, 
as Wayne Hill is down the field. Picked up by number 22, Mike DiCiera. There's number 22, Eric Belgard. Sorry about that. DiCiera is number 12. Caparasso behind the net. Caparasso passes it to number 19, J.R. Guida, as he is smoked as the shot is wide. Well, Dave, even though they didn't uh, convert that opportunity, Wayne Hill seems very well conditioned as they weren't last year. They really wore down at the end of the game. But this, this game doesn't seem like they're going to wear down. They're going to keep on trucking. Rosevu and Caparasso play catch behind the Wayne Valley net. Caparasso behind the goal. Caparasso fires a shot. And he scores as the Wayne Hills Patriots take a 6-4 lead. Dave Caparasso with his first goal of the game off a nice pass from Corey Rosenblum as the Patriots take a two-goal lead after the Indians come back to tie it at four. So 6-4 to four Patriots. Yeah, when the Wayne Hills oh, offense uh, holds, stops down the play and starts off from the back of the net, they score most of their goals, and as you can see, they've done good success as they're leading 6-4 right now. So this Wayne Hills team, last year they folded when Wayne Valley came back, but right now they're just taking it to a whole nother level, totally motivated because they did not want to lose to Wayne Valley again after having a big lead. As the ball is picked up by number 23 for the Indians. Yeah, very rough face-off right there. Uh, no, no calls were made. Cavallo being defended by Klein. Caval to Bishop. Bishop, as the pass intended for Niddle, as Niddle and Hamburg fight for the ball. As Wayne Valley regains possession. Bishop to Cavallo. Cavallo being defended by Klein. Cavallo behind the Patriots net. Passes it to Martin. Martin to Niddle, who got the Indians on the board for their first goal. As Bishop cannot handle the pass as he fights for the ball with number five for the Wayne Hills Patriots, Matt Diglio. Martin up the field for the Indians. Passes off to Eisenberg. Eisenberg. To Cavallo. Cavallo behind the goal. As Cavallo stripped. Great defense there by the Patriots. Josh Klein and Matt Diglio. Yeah, great defense by Hills. Even though uh, Wayne Valley had it in the zone a while, they just they just kept strong and a good play by uh, Josh Klein. Well, you really can't out overlook David Cornish in this game. He's in a force. He's had a great season this year, and he's continuing his great uh, play in this game. Patriots up the field, number five, Matt Diglio leading the charge. Off to Rosenblum. Rosenblum to Caparasso. Caparasso to Hannenberg. Caparasso got the last tally for the Patriots, giving them a two-goal advantage. If you're just joining us, we are here in the third quarter. I'm David Stuntup alongside Sean Yu and Michael Botwinick. Hannenberg. Rosenblum behind the net. As it's taken away by Wayne Valley as the ref blows his whistle. As Wayne Valley now has possession. Pass on the field, intended for nil, out of his reach, taken away by Eric Belgard. Great defense by Wayne Hills, getting the, getting the pass before it even comes to the Valley player. Hannenberg down the left sideline, loses his footing but gets back up as he is stripped of the ball. As there's a fight for the ball in the Wayne Valley zone by the left sideline. This ball is missed by Eric Balgar as he fails to scoop up the ground ball. Taken away by Niddle. Niddle being defended by Belgard. Niddle down the right sideline. Looking for room to maneuver. Oh, 
Nero behind the net to Hoffern. Hoffern to Bishop. Bishop going against Hannenberg. Ball skirts out. Martin out to Cavallo. Cavallo decides not to fire a shot. Nero trying to make a move around Belgard. Nero goes to his right. Nero changes direction. Nero to Cavallo. Cavallo fires a shot and it's over the net. Again, Wayne Hills is playing great defense right now, not letting up. Wayne Valley has getting, been getting good shots, but the defense has been blocking everything. Ball out to Martin. Martin makes a nice move, but decides not to fire the shot. Martin being defended by Little. Martin around to his left. Little to Hawthorne. Bishop to Eisenberg. Eisenberg centers it to Niddle. Niddle, nice spin move as he fires a shot. And he scores! Corey Niddle gets his second goal of the game as it trickles past David Cornister as the Wayne Hills Patriots lead is now cut to 6 to 5. Yeah, even though Wayne Hills had played great defense up until then, Corey Niddle just made a spectacular move to break through and just get a great goal and pass David. Well, yeah, Niddle's a great athlete. He really did a great job spinning around the Wayne Hills defenders. Nothing really could do about that. Just great athletic play. Face off at the center circle. As it's taken by Bobby Bishop. As Niddle cannot handle the pass from Bishop. As it's picked up by Matt Diglio. Diglio blazing up the field. Diglio as the pass is out of the reach of Dave Caparasso. Caparasso has the last tally for Wayne Hills. As his goal is the deciding goal in this game so far. As the Patriots are clinging by their teeth to a 6-5 to five edge. Yeah, that was a great opportunity for Hills on a fast break. If Diglio connected with that pass, it, sh it probably would have been a goal. Martin up the field. Martin being defended by Diglio. Martin passes outside to Bishop, but it's a bad pass as it's taken away by number 19, J.R. Glita. As Glita loses his footing. It is very tough to keep your footing on this field late in games because this field gets chewed up pretty easily. I mean, even before the game, the field was chewed up as uh, Wayne Hill is has not been keeping their uh, field very very neat before games. Yeah, it's Rosenblum. As the ball is taken away by Wayne Valley. As that pass is taken away by Diglio. Diglio trying to maneuver, trying to find someone to pass the ball to. As a nice play by Caparas as he almost comes up with the ball. As it will be Wayne Valley ball. Nittle up the field. Nittle already has two goals in this game. Nittle being defended by Little. Two sophomores. Nittle scores! A hat trick for Corey Nittle as the Wayne Valley Indians come back again and this time tie the game at six. Yeah, Nittle has just basically been the offense for Wayne, Wayne Valley and just making some amazing plays to score his goals. And it doesn't seem to matter what kind of stick Nittle uses. He's changed his sticks numerous times. Obviously, they took it and stick away from him when they set his pot goes too deep, but it doesn't mean seem to make a difference for him. Two nice spin moves in a row, ending in goals for Corey Nettle. Yeah, so based, the offense is for Hills and uh, Valley is basically uh, Corey Nettle and Jared Glita. So now the Patriots have blown two leads in this game. The first time they responded well by scoring two goals to give themselves their second lead of the game. Let's see what they come back with here. That was a nice shot before by Hannover, just off the mark by a short, short distance. 
as Wayne Valley trying to take the lead here. Bishop, as the pass is intended for Cavallo, out of his reach. As the ball crosses the end line, and it will be Wayne Hill's ball. As Kornitzer brings the ball off the left sideline, looking for someone to pass it off to. As the pass cannot be handled by number 12, Mike DiCiera. As I call a push, I believe, on Wayne Valley. Yeah, that Dave uh, Kornitzer just threaded the needle with that pass, just getting it right through, but uh, couldn't catch the ball and would have, would have made an eventual goal. Hannenberg passes it to Glita. Rosenblum trying to make a move. Rosenblum fires a ground ball as it bounces wide right. Picked up by DiCiera. As DiCiera being defended by Steve Smith. As DiCiera loses the ball, and it will be Wayne Valley ball. DiCiera is not happy with the call. Yeah, he was just trying to start up the offense, but couldn't find anyone to pass to right there. Valley up the field. There's number 20, R10, Asani. Bishop, out to Eisenberg, Eisenberg. To number 24, Ryan Cummings. Hawthorne. To Cummings, not much time here left in the third quarter. As Wayne Valley, I guess, is holding for one last shot. Cavallo being defended by Klein. Cavallo, nice spin move. Cavallo cuts it to the middle. He fires a shot. What a save by David Kornitzer as he denies Chris Cavallo of a scoring opportunity here close to the end of the third quarter. And that is the end of the third quarter here at Patriots Field as the Wayne Hills Patriots and Wayne Valley Indians are in a suddenly quite tight contest, excuse me, here at Patriots Field as the Wayne Valley Indians come back twice and now tie the game at six. So guys, what are your thoughts on the third quarter of play? I mean, just a great battle between both teams as Wayne Hills defense let up in the beginning of the half, beginning of the quarter to Wayne Valley's offense, but coming back with some strong offense and uh, just getting as the, as the Wayne Hills motto, one of their mottos, as Matt Weinstein told me, as their defense makes offense. Well, yeah, I think one of the uh, Wayne, Kill, Wayne uh, Hills keys in the second half is trying to contain Corey Niddle. I mean, maybe they have to put Little on him. He has to use his speed against them, but there's some way they got to stop him, and I think this, this game's going to come right down to the end. So, uh, Mr. Bowen, I'd like to thank you for your contributions to today's game as uh, Matt Dubow will take over the play-by-play -play duties in a thriller here at Patriots Field. So this could be a nice way for uh, Matt to end his broadcasting career. Yes, thank you very much, Dave. So, if you're just tuning in with us, I'm Matt Dubow, alongside me, Dave Suntup, Sean Yoon. And uh, we are in for a nail-biter, folks. The score's all knotted up, and it's Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley. The Mayor's Cup, as it's been dubbed as of late, of lacrosse of the spring season. So we're in for quite a battle. Guys, you just got into your uh, closing comments on the, the end of the third quarter. you have any predictions for the end of this one? We saw how it played out last year at Barber's Pond, but uh, any idea about this year? I mean, it's just a tough battle, but... My prediction, I, I believe it's going to go into overtime as last year's, last year's game because I know it's just back and forth game right now. Well, this is a different contest right now because last year Wayne Hills had a lead and they blew a lead. But now they're playing in basically a whole new ball game here. It's all down to one quarter, whatever team could really bring it here. But Wayne Hills really needs to play more physical in their own zone, especially around their net. Because Wayne Valley has just gotten way too many scoring opportunities right by the goal. I agree, Dave. I mean, the shot's on goal. It's a big number in hockey, and uh, hockey can be compared to lacrosse in many ways. Lacrosse, the same thing. That number alone can make or break your game. You know, your defense can only play so well. Eventually, the shots are going to find their way into the goal. So here we go. Start of the fourth quarter here. Still a bright, sunny day. Summer's coming, but... Definitely a packed crowd. You know, 
without having this game at Barber's Pond, we weren't exactly sure what cut type of crowd was going to be pulled well, here Matt, from the Valley side. But There has definitely been a very nice turnout here at Patriots Field, but I still believe that this game should have been played at Barber's Pond because they played on a Friday night. People like to hang out on Friday nights, go to events. None of the other sports were having games today. Softball and baseball have games, and some of the other sports do too, so it's tough to get a full turnout, but still a nice turnout here. I agree. It's nice. Could be bigger. As you see, Bobby Bishop in control. Passes it off. Over to his counterpart. Makes his way towards the net. Dumps it off to number 24 from Wayne Valley, who bobbles it. Bowen Jones. 24 is coming. As you see some conflict in the corner there. Yeah, it's going to be game, Wayne Hill's possession. This game will get very physical here in the fourth quarter, as it was last year. Wayne Hill's in possession. Pass from Dave Cornitzer, intended for Matt Diglio. Bob was out of bounds, couldn't handle it. Dave, as you were saying, did you finish your comment? Uh, I'm done, but like I said before, I both teams really need to play very physical, and Wayne Hills, especially on defense, needs to be more physical and keep Wayne Valley out of the crease area. All right. So, Wayne Valley, Bobby Bishop in possession, looking for something. Dumps it off to Ryan Cummings, number 24. As he dumps it off, and Wayne Valley trying to get something going on offense here. Number eight, Nick Mesco is going to be called for out of bounds, I believe, in the change of possession. Josh Klein's going to dump it in to Kyle Hannenberg. Kyle Hannenberg's just known for his intensity. As you see, player just tried to take him out there with a stick, and the stick just went flying. Dumps it off to Mike DiCiara. If there's one player that could really take over this game for Ian Hills, it's definitely Kyle Hannenberg with his intensity, bone-crushing hits, and hard shots. I mean, he could definitely make a game-changing play here. Corey Rosenblum, four-year varsity player. He Cradling, looking for something. He's moving towards the goal, and he's going to be attacked by two players. Keeps the ball, loses it. He's just swarmed, and he goes down to the ground as Wayne Valley's going to repossession. There's a break in the play. Yeah, that's the physical defense that uh, you guys were talking about that that both teams need to win. Um, I mean, last year Wayne Valley just had the better of the defenses just coming up and winning. So Kyle Hanenberg here is going to try to make something happen for Wayne Hills. Wayne Hills needs some kind of spark to reignite their offense. We know when they get one goal, a slew of goals is almost sure to follow because momentum is a humongous factor in this game. Wayne Hills is definitely better at offense, running these set plays, being patient, and really passing the ball well. But another factor for the Patriots, for these seniors, this is the last game they will ever play here at Patriots Stadium because states are coming up and they're on the road in Sparta for round one of the state tournament. So. Unless something, some miracle happens, I don't think they will ever be playing a game here again, talking about the seniors. Corey Rosemoon's been struggling with his shots today. They've been going high quite frequently, but let's see if he can get it under wraps for when it counts. So Wayne Valley's going to bring it in, dumps it off to the goalie. Wayne Hills really needs to get some big guys in front of the goalie and screen D'Alessandro, so then Wayne Hills could fire hard shots on the ground, and then he won't have time to react to their hard shots. D'Alessandro taking it out of the, the crease, you know, you've seen that from Wayne Hills, Dave Cornster quite a bit, but not from Wayne Valley. As, Valley, as Hills, excuse me, playing great defense. It's going to be Hills' possession. Mike DiCiara to take it. Passes it off to Hannenberg. Hannenberg, one of the inspirational leaders of this team. He's only a junior, so he's not an official captain, but they, the, the other players definitely look to him for uh, support as he's going to take it full force, puts a move on him. Shot fired. Great save. Rebound caught by Little. Valley takes control. Bobbled. Number 12, Mike DiCiara comes out of nowhere and makes a great play to regain possession. Great hustle play there by Mike DiCiara, keeping the offensive possession alive for the Patriots. Hustle plays like that could really come up big in a game of this magnitude. Caparasso passes it. Intended for Rosenblum. I believe it's going to go out of play. All right. So, Valley's going to regain possession. As time is dwindling here in the fourth quarter, still time for someone to make a move, but... 
There will be a winner, I promise you that, folks, so stay with us. Yeah, just before on that play when Kyle just drove into the lane, he knows he's strong and he knows people can't stop him. As before, you see people just bouncing off him. He could have he could have made a play like that, and that's all you have to expect for Kyle Hennenberg to step up. Valley inbounds, taken by Hennenberg. Hennenberg dumps off to Josh Klein. Ooh, intended for Ruben Kegelman. He got leveled as that pass came in. Valley regains possession. Passes to number 22, Dan Caviello. He's going to try to make something happen. And he's going towards the net. Dumps it off to number 24, Ryan Cummings. Cummings takes it behind the net. And the pass intended for number 6, Brian Hefferin. So there's going to be stop and play here. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, please email the Wayne Hills TV Club at waynehillstv at AOL.com. Once again, that is waynehillstv at AOL.com. As this is the last sporting event we are televising this year, as next year we'll be coming back to you from Allendale, New Jersey, most likely, as we'll be broadcasting the opening week of Wayne Hills football as the Wayne Hills Patriots will travel to Allendale, New Jersey to face the Northern Highlands Highlanders. Caviello dumps it off to Wayne Valley, number 21, Larry Martin. Martin, excuse me. Martin, looking for something. Dumps it off to number 24, Ryan Cummings. Back to Martin. Martin to Bishop. Bishop, known for his explosive play, and there we go with the goal from Bobby Bishop. He seems to be Mr. Clutch for this Wayne Valley team. Guys, Wayne Valley's pulling ahead. Still plenty of time, and we know lacrosse is a very quick sport. Comments on that goal right there. Bobby Bishop knows the meaning of clutch. Last year in overtime, game tied at four. He broke the hearts of Wayne Hills lacrosse fans with his overtime goal. And right now, just now, on his last goal, making these defenders look like cones, just digging around them, then firing a shot past David Kornitzer. Yeah, he's like the Robert Ory of lacrosse, you know, just making big shots and big situations, you know. He's a step-up player for this team. Wayne Hill is feeling the pressure. Well, Sean, actually, I think uh, Bobby Bishop, I compare him to someone like a Kobe Bryant type because uh, Kobe Bryant's clutch throughout the game. Robert Horry, big shot Bob, as they call him, always shows up uh, for the end of the game and makes one shot. Hannenberg, shot is blocked, deflected, excuse me. Valley regains possession. Bishop. They're going to try to score again. No wasting the clock in the cross. It's so quick. You just got to go for it. As the pass is missed, intended for number 24, Ryan Cummings, goes out of bounds. It's going to be Hill's possession. So, Matt, for the first time since the first quarter, this is the first time Wayne Hills is trailing. How do you think they will respond now? I think they're going to stay calm. They've been in this position before, you know, especially last year. A lot of these players were there for that game and played in that game. Um, they're hungry for it, and I believe they're going to send this into overtime, just like Sean predicted earlier. As we see Matt Diglio taking it up. Passes back to his goalie, Dave Kornitzer. Kornitzer. Intended for Kyle Hanenberg. Goes over his head. It's going to be Valley possession. So the Wayne Hills defense is really feeling it now. They have to play big. Otherwise, this, this game could go down the drain for them very quickly. Uh, yeah, Wayne Hills, they need to get more score opportunities. They haven't had good shots on goal. They've been missing with their shots. They really need to show some patience on offense, pass the ball around well, and look for holes in the defense. When they see a hole in the defense, they can't hesitate. They have to shoot, especially with their big shooters, Kyle Hannenberg, J.R. Glita, Corey Rosenblum. Those are the guys that really need to come up big for this Patriots team. I believe there's a timeout taken by Wayne Hills. Yeah, like you said, Dave, the step-up players, the big-time players need to step up. And also, the defense, you know, Last uh, last year's game, they just let up the defense, having Wayne Valley score consecutive goals to come back and win. You know, Wayne Hills, Wayne Hills' defense right now is their main focus. 
So Matt, as you mentioned earlier in this broadcast, this is your last ever game you will be doing for Wayne Hill CV. And I'd like to share my thoughts about uh, working with you. It's just been a total pleasure to work with you. Ever since uh, you joined on last year, when you started doing hockey for us, and then you did some lacrosse, baseball, that long game that you did at uh, Patriot Stadium doing the baseball game with uh, Spencer and Carmelo. And then football this year was just a total blast, especially announcing the state championship game with you. It's just been a total honor to be in the broadcast booth with you, Matt. Thank you, Dave. You're very professional and uh, you're one of a kind and you surely are going to go places in this world. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I keep your, your number on uh, my speed dial for when I need a connection later on down the road and I'm jobless, but it's been an honor and I hope this is not my last game calling. I'm going to try to make it back for some of the football games and hockey games to support Brian Rossman, but uh, maybe I'll get a little guest announcing in there. If Mr. Hook Straight lets me. Oh, yeah. Also, you can watch the games online because yes. the, starting next year, I believe the games will be online on Channel 77. So if you go to www.waynetownship.com, you'll be able to watch the games online. And that's great for the people who do not have cable because Channel 77 is not available on satellite. Also great for those who have moved on to other areas, such as me. I'm going to be moving on to Penn State, hopefully pursuing some type of broadcasting area there of studies. Uh, it's going to be interesting, but they certainly have quite an athletic program there, and hopefully I could announce a few of their minor minor events. I doubt I'll be moving on to their football games. But. And Matt, the one thing I really miss about you is your work ethic. You're always here on time, helping out with whatever you can, really preparing hard for these games. You're always one of the first people here and one of the last people to leave, and uh, you just can't replace that type of work ethic. That's what separates you from the crowd, and that's the type of uh, response I love to get. Thank you, Dave, and it's, it's been great. A great few years here. I'm definitely going to miss it as the players take the field again, and action's going to resume. Wayne Hills in possession. Their goalie, Dave Kornitzer, passes it over to Kyle Hanenberg, the spark plug, so to say. Hard pass downfield. All the way to number 35, Josh Klein, defender, who's on the opposite side of the goal. If you're just joining us, you are watching Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley Boys Lacrosse here in the fourth quarter. I'm David Santop alongside Matt Dubow and Sean Yu. Valley regained possession. Bobby Bishop, pass intended for number seven, Dan Eisenberg. Goes out of bounds, so Wayne Hills is going to take possession. You know, Hills, they're really looking for something. They have to increase their shots on goal dramatically if they want to have any chance of winning. So Matt, Matt and Sean, now that time is dwindling here in the fourth quarter, do you think Wayne Hill starts to press, thinking in their minds they don't want to repeat a last year and how desperate they really are for a goal and how much they really need to score? I say no. I say you just go for a single goal and go to overtime because guess what? If they score again, that's the game. I think that puts it out of reach. As you see, shot on goal by Ruben Kegelman and a great save there by Valley. Excuse me, not Ruben Kegelman. That was J.R. Galita who has been uh, the man of the hour for Wayne Hills. And I believe Wayne I think Valley. Wayne Hill should just st keep what they're doing, keep that same offense flowing, because right Silverstein. now it hasn't let up. What a shot there by Ryan Cummings, set up by Brett Silverstein. Excuse me, Sean. <laughs> As I believe it's going to be Wayne Valley possession. On the defensive side for Wayne Hills, they really need to get back on defense in transition because Wayne Valley has really gotten a lot of open shots, and that's how Wayne Valley has gotten their goals because Wayne Valley really likes to score on the fast break and around the net. Yeah, Wayne Hills defense has stepped up their game and reduced the pressure on their goalie. Their goalie's been playing fantastic, making some great saves. Shots on goal, like we I've been preaching all game, is one of the most important statistics in this, this type of sport as Wayne Valley Ryan Cummings is going to dump it off to Chris Cavallo, number nine. Cavallo, around the perimeter, passes it to number 23, Corey Niddle. Corey Niddle has been uh, the man of the hour, so to say, for Wayne Valley. He's well, had so is Bobby Bishop, too. Yeah, Corey's had three goal goals. Goal. Bobby, Mr. Clutch, he has the timely goal as Niddle over Cavallo. Cavallo has quite a bit of goals this year as well. He's one of the offensive powerhouses for Valley. As Valley just putting the pressure on the Wayne Hills defense. Matt Diglio makes a great spin move trying to keep it away. Bob Bishop's just all over him. And Wayne Hills likes the call. The fans were saying it before the ref. As it's going to be Wayne Hills possession. Matt Diglio is going to inbound. I believe they call it a push on Bishop there. I like the call. Stiggs with the long pass. 
Nice throw there. Way to get rid of it to Dicciara. Dicciara intended for Dan Caparasso. And it's going to go out of bounds. Possession. I believe Possession Hills. Dan Caparasso is going to inbound it. Corey Rosenblum takes the pass behind the net. He's going to look to set something up. They need a goal here. Rosenblum. Pass to JR. JR Galita. Just left of the goal. JR has been on fire for them. But the pressure was just too much there. And the shot went a little wide left. Valley inbounds it. Clears it. Cummings. Oh, excuse me. Niddle to Bishop. Bishop. Shot fired. Great save. Dan Kornitzer. JR. Goes to JR Galita. JR is just. We're going to see the call. JR Galita was just feeling the pressure on that one. And the call is for Hills. Come on, JR. Kyle Hannenberg. Ground shot bounces up in the air and it's going to go out of bounds. I guess, I guess that question before is answered that the Wayne Hills are just pressing as before Matt Diglio just launched it up. And same with uh, Dave Cornish, they're just launching up to the offense, trying to get a goal as quick as they can. Corey Rosenblum back to Caparasso. Caparasso trying to start something. To Rosenblum ground pass. That would have been a beautiful pass to Galita. He just wasn't expecting it. And great hustle there by JR, just not enough. And it's going to be Wayne Valley possession. So Wayne Valley inbound. Dave Cornister has just been solid in the pipes for Wayne Hills. Great saves. Well, the Patriots have a very bright future in that as David Cornister has just had a sensational season. He's come up big time and time again. Excuse for me, this Dave, but Brett team. Silverstein bobbles the pass and it goes out of bounds. Wayne Hills possession. Hannenberg's going to take it. Hills is going to push it on them. They need to score, and they need to score quick. Well, Let's time see. is definitely dwindling here in the fourth quarter. So, Wayne Hills, they're at this point, they're just hoping to get one goal, tie the game at seven. How much time do you think is left, overtime. Roughly. Two well, minutes? I'd say about three, or f probably three minutes because each quarter is 12 minutes 12 long. minutes. Okay, here we go. Kyle Hannenberg. He's going to take it in. But I'm not totally sure, though, because there is no scoreboard for us to look at, just so the viewers know. Almost loses home. his footing. Shot, and it's scored! Kyle Hannenberg darts it in from outside the arc, and that was just a great move there by Kyle. He just sniped that one in from outside. Long range. Kyle, as we said, has been the spark plug for this team, and obviously they're going to look for him to be the leader. Ties it up, guys. Sean, you predicted this. There's still time left. Either team could still win in regulatory time. But overtime is certainly on both their teams' minds. What do you do now if you're Wayne Hills and you want to make a move for the win? I mean, same thing they're doing now. I mean, give it to Kyle Hanenberg. He's a leader on the team, and he's just a scoring machine right now. That was a laser beam there by Kyle Hanenberg as the Patriots tie this game up at 7. I said it before, the player that really could make a game-changing play for Wayne Hills was Kyle Hanenberg as Mr. Hanenberg comes up big here for the Patriots to tie the game at 7. That was Hanenberg's second goal as he takes the face off, picks it up, and there's a break in the action. I believe there's going to be a timeout. Not sure who was called by. I'm going to guess Wayne Valley, judging by the goal, but... So Wayne Hills knew exactly what they had to do. Kyle Hannenberg came up and did it. It's tied 7-7. Folks, if you're just joining us, I'm Matt DeBell alongside me, Dave Suntup and Sean Yoon. It's all tied up here. Boys lacrosse, Wayne Hills versus Wayne Valley, the Mayor's Cup of the Spring. 7-7 seven seven. as we're dwindling down the last few minutes of the fourth quarter. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, please email the Wayne Hills TV Club at WayneHillsTV at AOL.com. Once again, that is WayneHillsTV at AOL.com. Now, this game is bringing back some uh, bad memories, you know, because this is exactly what happened basically for the last year's game as the timeout with the time doing them down and Wayne Valley last year stepped up and scored the goals but uh, let's hope that Wayne Hills does it this time yeah think back to last year and it's quite identical so it's definitely been a crazy game here if you're just joining us 
Corey Nell got the Indians on the board first. But then Wayne Hills came back with a goal from Kyle Hannenberg. And then Corey Rosebloom and Jared Guida got goals for the Patriots. So they're at 4-1. Then at the half, it was 4-2 Patriots. And then Daniel Eisenberg tied up at 4 with a goal. But then the Patriots came back with two more goals to make it 6-4. But then Corey Nettle and Bobby Bishop got on the board to make it a 6-6 game. Actually, I think I missed a goal. I mean, the Patriots, the Indians got two goals, and then took the lead on a goal by Bobby Bishop, yes, excuse yes, me. Yes, yes. But then Kyle Hanberg just moments ago, moments ago, shooting a laser beam by Del Sandro. So, play's going to resume. Kyle Hanberg takes it in. So it's definitely been quite a thriller here at Patriots Field as one team will go home with a great victory, which will be very momentous for them, and the other team will go into states losing a heartbreaker. Hanneberg, he's got all the time in the world as far as he's concerned compared to that last goal he just got. He's going to pass it off to Dave Caparasso. Caparasso running around behind the goal. Passes it to Corey Rosenblum, the senior. Corey Rosenblum in his last game at Wayne Hills. Wild pass there. And it's going to go out of play. In this situation, if you're Wayne Hills or Wayne Valley, I don't think you want to take too many chances because one costly mistake could cost you the game. But good passes, look for the shots. If you have a shot, take it. Get guys in front of the net and try to screen the goalie. The key is going to be defense for both teams here. Nobody wants to let up that goal. Corey Rosenblum, they let him go a little bit there. So he's cradling outside. Cuts back. Covered by Bishop. Oh, and his shot was deflected there by an opponent's stick. Caparasso struggling. And I believe that's Mike DiCiara. Valley takes it in. I believe it's Corey Niddle. Niddle. Past the halfway line. Niddle. He's going to take it. Shot. Saved by Dave Kornitzer. What a save there. He's just coming up big. As another timeout is called. What a sensational save there by David Kornitzer. Shutting down Corey Niddle as Corey Niddle was trying to break the 7-7 tie here late in the fourth quarter. Guys, as I watch Dave Kornitzer, I get flashbacks to Charlie Kemlin, another great goalie for Wayne Hills Lacrosse, and he was just amazing. And it shows that a young player like this in an experienced game He's he's just gonna have bright future ahead of him. Yeah, I believe that goal is the is a play of the game right now for Wayne Hills, and if they could just come back and score a couple, score at least a goal in the closing minutes to just get the win. I agree. It would definitely be a big win for the Patriots going into the state tournament as they face Sparta on Wednesday on the road. And then Wayne Valley will definitely have their hands on Northern Highlands. I assume, I don't know much about Sparta, but I assume there will be a very tough opponent for Wayne Hills. They're big, I can tell you that much, Dave. I know uh, football, we've played them quite a bit in states. Basketball, they always beat us, unfortunately. They're very big. Which team? Uh, Sparta. Uh, we've never played them in football, Yes, we have. States, I know we have. It was before your time. I believe it was Chris Olsen's year. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're you're going way back, Dubo. They have powder blue uniforms, I think. I don't know. Don't ask me. I was in the myself and Joe Dubo on the radio. They uh, they're good at soccer as well, according to Sean. You are uh, our analyst here. Yeah, so, Wayne Hills lost to them in soccer this year in the second round of the state tournament. The boys' team I'm talking about. Well, enough looking into the future, and let's look into the present as Wayne Valley and Wayne Hills is about to take the field. The final minutes of the fourth quarter as it's all tied up. 7-7. Seven seven. If you're just joining us, wow, you turned on Channel 77 right at the, the just right moment because uh, it's going to get very exciting. Jared Galita leading the Wayne Hills Patriots with three goals. He's got a hat trick. Corey Niddle for uh, Wayne Valley has a hat trick as well. Niddle taking the ball around the outside. He's going to take it behind the net. Covered by Matt Diglio. Passes it out to number 21, Larry Martin. Martin. Top of the key. Martin. Good spin move. Great defense by Bowen Jones. 
Martin to Cavallo. Cavallo is known for his acrobatic moves. Top of the key, back to Corey Niddle. Niddle, looking to take it himself. Great defense there by Bowen Jones. Knocks it to the ground, little hip check there as well. Took him to the ground, the ball is being juggled. Regained by Kyle Hannenberg. Hannenberg attempts to clear it to Diglio, pass deflected and taken by number 14 for Wayne Valley, Caloria Golium. And uh, it's going to be a stop in time. I believe a timeout on Wayne Hills. So lots of timeouts as we're getting to the final moment. Teams are trying to write up some plays, I guess. Yeah, I feel like I'm having deja vu right now. The double, the double timeouts, you know, re very reminiscent of the last year's game. Yes, yes. So there could be less than a minute here left in the fourth quarter. If you're just joining us, you're turning into a thriller as the Wayne Hills Patriots and the Wayne Valley Indians are tied at seven here at Patriots Field. I'm David Stunts up alongside Matt Dubow and Sean Yu. So guys, if this game goes into overtime, which team do you think has the advantage in the extra session? Unfortunately, because obviously I'm rooting for the Wayne Hills Patriots, I'm going to have to say Wayne Valley just because they have very clutch players. Bobby Bishop, who's got great experience and seems to always be there in the in the final moments of overtime of the, the fourth quarter. And Chris Cavallo as well, even though he's been a little quiet tonight, makes amazing aerobic moves and just the shots that you wouldn't believe. You know, Wayne Hills has a great, great goalie with Dave Kornitzer, so... It, you don't know. I'd like to say the, the edges for Wayne, the Wayne Hills Patriots, but it's going to be a close one. That's all I could say. I think I think Wayne Hills might step up because they have finesse players like Kyle Hannenberg and Corey Rosenblum that will step up in uh, pressure situations. Corey's been uh, rather quiet tonight, but he is certainly an experienced player, to say the least, as the players take the field again. Well, David Kornitzer has just been a stunning goal for the Patriots, so I th I'd probably give Wayne Hills a goaltending edge, but overall, Wayne Valley has been better at scoring inside. They've been getting better scoring chances, so I'd probably have to give the edge to Wayne Valley right now. They've also been here before. Last year, in overtime against Wayne Hills, after coming back from a 4-2 deficit, Bobby Bishop sent the Wayne Hills faithful home very upset. As Coviello passes it to Corey Niddle. Corey Niddle. And the shot is wide. I believe that's the end of regulation. As Valley had the last chance there to come away with a win in regular time. So, guys, it's the end of regulation. Um, coming into overtime, what are your comments on the game thus far and the future? Well, Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley, deja vu over again. Except now the score is 7-7 going into the extra session. But this is what Wayne Hills has been waiting for for more than a year. They were so devastated after blowing that game against Wayne Valley last year. This time they've blown the lead twice, so they really want to come out of here with the win. And they want to win the Warriors Cup this year. They do not want to be beaten by Wayne Valley two years in a row. So I'd really look for Wayne Hills to come out and make a statement. But Wayne Valley, they also don't want to lose to Wayne Hills. They want to be the best team in town. There's a lot of bragging rights on the line. So look for an intense extra session here from both teams. Yeah, I, if I was the mayor, I'd be very pleased how this game is turning out, you know. I feel like Denzel Washington from the movie uh, Deja Vu just coming back to what I relived, you know, from the last year's game. Great comments there, Sean. So, as Brian Rossman gets a chuckle, our cameraman taking a break. Yeah, Brian meeting. Rossman has just done a fantastic job this season. All the camera work, all the dedication. He's the heart and soul of the crew. Captains, we're meeting there. Breaking. I gave you the other tape, didn't I? What? I gave you another tape, didn't I? As. Rosen! As the players take the field again. So now I'm not exactly sure. I wasn't there last year, guys. We're going to have to cut to a short, short break as we switch tapes. Technical. We'll be right back.
And uh, there's already a break in action in um, this overtime as Wayne Valley took control briefly off the faceoff and uh, there was a timeout called, I'm not sure by which team. So guys, we had some brief comments there. Um, as far as my thoughts is I, I think Wayne Hills has to be aggressive. Um, their shots on goal have not been nearly even with uh, Wayne Valley, and that's the key. I've been saying it all day, shots on goal. If you put pressure on the goalie in the defense, eventually they're going to crack, especially in overtime like this. you got to look to put the pressure on them, get some quick shots, and I think a quick goal will follow. My key player over time for the Patriots, the captain, defenseman, number 22, Eric Belgar. The Patriots really need to keep Wayne Valley out of the goal area and make Wayne Valley take further shots because last year Bobby Bishop his goal in overtime was a short shot right by the net so they really need to keep Wayne Valley away from the goal and I'm sure Bobby Bishop is going to be looking to uh, duplicate his results from last year because it's his senior year hit one of his last games in Wayne did you know if they're home Dave they're in Northern Highlands so as well there this is going to be their last game in Wayne both teams, so it's going to be very emotional for the seniors, and they're going to be gunning for uh, the winning the winning shot as they take the field once again. I mean, this is a very pivotal game. I mean, if they if Wayne Hills ends up winning this, they might have the momentum to even beat Sparta into the into the states. It's true. Standings wise, this game means nothing, but emotionally, uh, it's just enormous. Your crosstown rivals, you know, many of these kids have been best friends as Valley takes it in. Bobby Bishop, who we've just been talking about constantly, passes it off to Cavallo. Cavallo to Brian Heffern. Heffern back to Cavallo. Cavallo passes to Niddle. Niddle's been the spark plug for Wayne Valley. Niddle. Spin move, and he's. Taken down, there's a flag. I believe Matt is going to get a tripping, but we'll see. Technical foul. There's a holding, so I believe there's going to be a shot. Because there was a technical foul, they called it holding. I believe he gets a shot, maybe. And I'm wrong. Just uh, <laughs> he regains possession, you know. Uh, I've never... Announced the cross before. You got to give me a, some kind of break here. As Valley looking for something quick. Cavallo to Bishop. Bishop to number seven Eisenberg. Eisenberg to Niddle. Niddle. Quick shot there by Cavallo and great save by da Dave Cornitzer. And it's Valley's ball. What an incredible save there by David Kornitzer as Chris Cavallo is right by the net, no one in front of him, as David Kornitzer comes up huge for the Patriots. He's got to be feeling the pressure. You know, this is exactly what Wayne Hills didn't need to do. We were saying how they needed to keep the ball out of their zone, and it's been all Valley thus far in, the, in overtime. That was just a great opportunity for Valley. You don't get those often. Let's see if they can capitalize on another effort as Niddle takes it, passes it. To number seven, Eisenberg. Eisenberg back to Niddle. Niddle. As Valley's going to try to set up some offense. Niddle backing up. Looks like he might take this himself. As he does a nice spin move. Nice shot as it goes just high over the net. But if that was a little bit lower, that could have been it. As Niddle was trying to go top shelf there as he did for one of his previous goals. Valley takes it in. Bobby Bishop, Mr. Clutch, can't keep it as they're shuffling in the dirt. Great defense there by Ian Little. Cavallo comes up with it. Cavallo with a weak shot. I believe it was deflected there as Dave Cornister is going to take it. And timeout Wayne Hills. So guys we just saw an offensive uh, and defensive struggle there. Wayne Hills and Wayne Valley. Wayne Valley in control for the majority if not all of overtime. Wayne Hills has got to be a little bit down as far as momentum goes. What do you do if you're a coach and you want to keep your team in this game? I mean Wayne Hills just have to keep their composure. I mean they didn't let up a goal so that's that's one positive thing and they got the ball back and they got a well worth timeout you know just just keep their composure and just get ready to score the goal. Great defense makes great offense. You said it yourself before, Dave. This is not the start that Wayne Hills would have hoped to have gotten off to in overtime. 
But at least this shows Wayne Hills that they can stop Valley when they have good score opportunities. So I think this definitely gives the Wayne Hills defense some confidence. Yeah, I like where you're going with that. You have to take this and reverse it. Use it as a boost in morale saying, you know what? They came at us and we stopped it. They gave us everything they had. They had all their all-stars on the, on the field and we stopped it. We shut them out. With a little help from Dave Cornitzer has just been amazing. So... If you're just joining us, I'm Matt DeBow alongside Dave Suntup and Sean Yu. And uh, you're in for a nail-biter as we're in overtime here at Wayne Hills Patriot Stadium. Field, excuse me. Stadium will be in the fall. As the players take the field again, it's all knotted up. 7-7, sudden death overtime. going to be Hill's possession. As I believe. And if I was the mayor, I'd be ecstatic how the last past two uh, mayor's cups have came. Have a uh, went and just just get your get your uh, get your popcorn ready as T.O. may say. Kyle Hannenberg taking it for the Patriots. Powering his way as he loses it. Picked up by Valley. Bobby Bishop. Bobby Bishop, known to come up with the ball in overtime, loses it. Great defense there. Josh Klein swiping at Valley. Niddle for Valley with the shot. Wide right as it's going to be Valley possession. DiCera hustles for a substitution. They're going to try to get an extra defensive man in, try to get Bowen Jones in for the play. Niddle takes the bounds. Top of the key. Martin back to Niddle. Cavallo, top of the key. Cavallo, dumps it off to Martin. Excuse me, that's Bishop. As Wayne Hills just shuts him down. Josh Klein comes out with it, taking hits. Oh, he was just leveled. And there's a man down. As Josh Klein, Klein is, is just down, down, let's hope he's okay. He's hurting. I thought that was definitely, definitely a dirty play. Looked like a cross check to me. He had the stick up and came out of nowhere. It looks like a leg injury as he's grabbing his leg. You never want to see this. Wayne Hills fans are just His head definitely upset. hit the ground hard. Let's hope he's okay. He's definitely he's a great friend of mine. I really hope he's okay as Margaret is attending to him. See Mr. Joseph Vasquez, the athletic director for Wayne Hills. Josh suffered a nose injury a little bit earlier in the season, I believe. And uh, he's just, you never want to see that. It's dirty play as Valley huddling and trying to scheme a little bit. Hills, you know, that's just got to motivate you right there. Because if, that, if that's not motivation, I don't know what is. That was all shoulder there by uh, the Wayne, Wayne Valley. Yeah, and the refs did not even call anything right there. Only the the one ref near the right called something, but that was called like, a stoppage, I believe, because yeah. of an injury. But that was a while after Klein got down. Yeah, I, I guess they thought it was clean. We're not exactly experts in lacrosse, but uh, it just didn't look clean to us. So um, we're just gonna hope that he's okay. As we are going to take a short break here, and we'll come back here shortly. I wasn't sure if we should throw the break Dang, he got leveled. Go ahead, let's pick up his hat. Yeah, he, he's okay, it's his leg. <coughs> that guy killed him. He got hit, he got hit once. He, he, head he got hit first time, and he was okay. And then the guy just killed him.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Matt DeBow, alongside me, Dave Suntup and Sean Yu. Welcome back from the commercial break. If you're just joining us, Josh Klein, there was a stoppage for injury. He got a hit in a controversial hit right there. And um, if that doesn't serve as motivation for this Wayne Hills team to go and make up for that, I don't know what will. It's going to be Wayne Valley possession. As On that play, Josh came up with the ball after a scuffle, took a hard hit to the helmet, kept going, and then just got leveled. Almost a hockey-style check there. I'm just shocked that he was able to walk off from that. As it Bobby just shows Bishop. the toughness of uh, Josh as he gets off the field. I don't know if he'll be back in this game, but I think his head hit the grass pretty hard, so he should definitely take a breather for now, make sure he's okay, Martin make sure he doesn't have a concussion. To Cavallo. Cavallo. At the top of the key. He's going to take it to the hole. Cavallo passes it off to Martin. Martin with the ground, and that's it! Valley again! In the overtime with a ground shot there through the legs of Dave Corniter for Wayne Hills Patriots. You can't be excited if you're a Valley Indian fan. It's a great moment for you as that was just a great setup by Chris Cavallo who assisted. And number 21 for Wayne Valley, Larry Martin with his second goal coming in overtime. As in the Mayor's Cup again, Wayne Valley defeats Wayne Hills in overtime, second year in a row. Guys, thoughts on the match? Well, in overtime, Wayne Valley just totally dominated, totally controlling the ball in the Wayne Hills zone, getting a lot of great score opportunities, and the Wayne Hills defense was only, a lot, was only able to do so much. And once they lost Josh Klein, one of their top defenders, Wayne Valley just capitalizes. Larry Martin getting a second goal of the game and the game-winning goal. And for the second year in a row, Wayne Valley completing a comeback and giving a heartache to Wayne Hills, Patriots, and Cross fans. Yeah, very questionable goal at the end after that uh, hit to Josh Klein. But, you know, I believe Wayne Valley was the better team out there, you know, just playing better defense, playing more, with more finesse. But uh, very, very familiar to the last year's game. And uh, Wayne Hill is Wayne Hill's just better uh, step up and beat Sparta. Yeah, so both teams now are going into states. Guys, looking on to states in the future, there still is the cross to be played. Who do you think are the bright stars that you saw there today? Who the team's going to look for in the playoffs to come up big? Well, with Wayne Hills, it's really going to start with defense and keeping the other team out of the goal area. And that starts with Eric Belgar. They need Eric Belgar to really come up big for them on defense. And then David Kortzer really played a fantastic game in goal. So those are your bright spots on defense. And then the Patriots really need to hope that Josh Klein is okay and that he'll be able to play on Wednesday. On offense, J.R. Guida, Kyle Hannenberg, Corey Rosenblum, and Dave Caparoso. They all need to come up big on offense, and they did score a lot today, but their defense just couldn't come up big in the end, and Wayne Hills couldn't translate an attack in overtime. Yeah, Dave, you just took everything out of my mouth right there, but uh, just like this game, they can't give up the lead, and uh, just I wish, wish Wayne Hills the best of luck. All right, guys, so that's it. Two years in a row, Wayne Hills can't hold on to the lead. So Wayne Valley is the winner of the Lacrosse Boys Mayor Cup for a second year in a row. This is our last program this year for Wayne Hills TV. We'd like to thank anyone who's been involved with us for any, who's worked with us on any production this year. We've had quite a number. We're going to be back next year in the fall with football as well as a slew of other sports. For Patrick Calabrese, David Suntup, Sean Yu, Andrew Gallo, and Brian Rossman, I'm Matt DeBow signing off and saying have a good night.